G'day everyone. Today's message is about grace and ease. Now, I'm obviously out bush with everything on my back, but I'm actually looking pretty good today compared to some of the treks I've done. And one of them which taught me about grace and ease was a superhero pilgrimage, uh, 84 kilometers across the South Coast Trail, the bottom of Tasmania, bottom of Australia. Truly epic, amazing adventure. Um, a very hard adventure, but uh, worthwhile. One day, it was day three, we had this massive mountain to ascend. It was a 50 degree ascension. Uh, it took us six hours when we thought we might be able to get it done in three. The uh, group novices decided, well, I, I gave them the choice. I was the leader of the expedition. It was a, it was a group of sons and fathers that I was taking on this pilgrimage uh, with a bunch of awesome uh, mentors that I'd collected from around Australia. And uh, I gave them the choice on day three, you know, what time do you want to start? And they, oh, we've been going pretty hard for a couple of days, so let's just have a bit of a sleep in. And I said, well, you guys are taking quite some time to pack up in the morning. And if we have a sleep in, that means we won't get going until around nine o'clock. It's due to be the hottest day of the trek today and we've got the biggest ascension. So thoughts, your choice, I recommend you actually do the opposite. I recommend you actually start an hour earlier and get the rest at the end of the day. A bit like the Jewish, you know, choosing to have the Sabbath at the end of the week instead of the Christians at the start of the week. But anyway, we won't go there. Um, so anyway, they chose. And their choice was to do it like they wanted. They wanted to sleep in. So we started, we didn't get going until the, to the foot of the mountain until 10 o'clock. And it was already 38 degrees. Uh, the biggest shade was a two foot high um, salt bush. And we had to go up. We didn't know where we were going to get water uh, from either. And there was some people just gargling water like I actually told them not to do. So basically they went against every single instruction that a more experienced person like myself was giving them. And we're about oh, halfway up and everyone is really, really hurting. But they're checking in with each other. They're doing it as a team, which was awesome. And they turn to me and go, hey, James, or Cheese, because Cheese is my nickname. Hey, Cheese, how you going? And I looked at them and I just smiled. And I just had this big grin on my face, pretty much all the way up. For a number of reasons. Firstly, there were so many lessons they were getting smacked in the face over. But secondly, I've, I've fought grace and ease for so long. I battled it realistically in my mind. I, um, as a younger person, would try and take the easier option, um, thinking that that was you know, where I would get grace and that would make it easier for me, but so often, I got tripped up and I found myself having to dig myself out of a quagmire. What I realized on this trek, halfway up that hill, mountain, grace and ease are a state of mind. And in that moment, I was physically hurting. I really was. I had 33 kilos on my back. Um, yeah, I was, I was hurting. That's all I could say. And inside, I was in a great place. So grace and ease are a state of mind. And us as harmonic conscious leaders, when we come to that place of grace and ease and we do the purification inside and then we keep our, our routine, our personal routine up to make sure that we're moving forward, we'll be able to maintain that grace and ease and watch what happens to our team. Because in turbulence, in crisis I call it turbulence, in turbulence, people look to the leader to find out what's gonna happen. If the leader is calm and balanced, there is an air of calm and balance which will settle to a point on the team as much as they're willing to receive it. But the more we can embody that grace and ease, the more it will spread and impact. Much love.